Hey guys, welcome to the second game of the second set, played on August 6th, I believe. This is going to be between Striker and Crossy, of Striker starting the up right-hand corner. As Striker17SC is where you can see him on Twitch, I highly recommend checking out his channel. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Crossy, starting as the Purple Zerg. And it's funny, because I feel like maybe it's one of those, when you say something, you start noticing it more, but I feel like he's picked up streaming a little bit since I last mentioned him in a cast. Go figure. But I've been able to catch a little bit of his stream here and there. He is starting as the Purple Zerg bottom left-hand corner. And thus far in the team battles, he's been on an absolute terror. This is going to be on Eclipse. It is going to be a ZVZ. And this is, again, one of those matchups where I do not know who to favor. Because both of these guys are extremely talented. And again, special thanks to both Gypsy and Jayun for getting me these reps. I really want to continue doing this. It's like, ah, oh, man, I feel like this Acceler... How do I put this? Usually with casts, I'm like, you know what? This is CPL. This is for my own entertainment, whatever. With these, I feel like a little bit of tension because I'm like, man, I really want some more of these really sweet, juicy North American or top level North American play reps. Usually these are relegated to the the Pro League of BSL sort of thing or the, uh, I'm trying to remember what the, is it Gosu League? Gosu League. These are Gosu League caliber players is what I'm saying. So it's like, man. Anyway. Like, want to do a good job. Looks like we are seeing a pool. Nope. Crossy's going to go ahead and go for, looks like, 12 hatch. We do have a 12 pool on the opposite side of the map, or maybe the 11 pool missed which drone it was built on, but close in proximity. Overlord first, then pool. Gas grabbing for striker. So striker is going to need to take some form of early aggression. It is possible he can sneak out a layer earlier. However, he's going to be down larva in the mid game. And usually, Overlord's passing each other. Usually, what ends up happening, the kind of statement I've heard in the past regarding previous era, Zerg versus Zerg, is whoever puts their spawning pool down first, as long as it's not within a certain, I can't remember the, you know what, I should find out how many seconds you can actually put your spawning pool down behind. That's actually really valuable information. If you are a really skilled Zerg player, let me know this. How many seconds can you wait to put down your spawning pool to be okay against your opponent. Because that's, I, being commentary, I want to learn that. We have a cadre of Zerglings being built. Point being, what people said in the past about Zerg versus Zerg is if you build your spawning pool later, you are ahead. Although that's coming from a pure economic perspective. Spawning pool is now finishing for Crossy. And as you can see, he's got the larva that are going to be produced here, where he can go ahead and produce, and there should be another larva coming momentarily. And this hatchery is also finishing, which is going to allow him, more or less, to produce a superior amount of Zerglings in this mid game. Two Zerglings are making their way across. Two were actually delayed and two are waiting, potentially because Striker didn't know what he was going up against Nightpool otherwise. I think once he comes and sees this creep, which he's going to see with his Overlord now, he's going to have to make decisions. Is he going to get aggressive with his Zerglings or is he going to go ahead and back off? So two Zerglings there. Crossy has built a lot of Zerglings to greet them. Speed is being upgraded a little bit behind comparatively. Both players have Lair being morphed. So right now, as things just purely stand, Crossy with a little bit of a lead. Just slight. You can see it in the supply count. 18 with Overlord incoming right there versus 17 and an Overlord not yet there, which has also led to a single drone lead for Crossy. But it's little things like this that can be the difference. A Creek Colony down already from Striker. And I'm wondering if this means he's tr going to try to invite a run by. Sneaking in, trying to get a drone kill, and is actually able to get into the main. Is he going to get... So wanting to do some disruption, picking off and disrupting gas production is huge. Getting a drone kill there, that evens up the overall drone count. Two of the Zerglings getting pinned back and dying. It looks like the Spire has been planted, so he's going to see that Spire timing comparatively. He's got a Spire of his own, which is just slightly behind, maybe because of this micromanagement happening. It's not going to be too much of a difference, but right now... Two Zerglings wreaking havoc. This is forcing Crossy to expend a little bit more micro comparatively. He's continuing to produce a handful of Zerglings out of this. He's still maintaining the overall drone lead, but has been somewhat delayed on his gas just by a sliver. And it is the small little bits of things that end up winning matches and more drones getting disrupted on the front. So even though Crossy's up a drone, he's had a little bit more trouble mining with what he's got in the meantime. That Zergling is going to escape with his life. I'm curious after this if, yeah, Crossy is going to start moving forward and getting aggressive. 
Stryker has a handful of Zerglings and a Sentinel Colony already up on his front door. They are now even in the overall drone count. And he's grabbing his second gas. Second gas is already up. Razor thin margins both directions. Zerglings trying to flood in and pick off those drones. Not quite able to do so. That Sunken Colony doing a lot of damage. One Zergling getting away from Striker. And so getting picked off on the front. Striker with home ground advantage. Looking to pick fights and draw these Zerglings back to that Creep Colony. Strike Crossy doing a good job of holding position. And not falling for the bait. Crossy getting the Mutalisks out just a little bit earlier by a sliver and a hair. Also producing a single Scourge with his grouping. And it looks like he's going to have, at least initially, one more Mutalisk. If I looked at those counts correctly, I will let you know a moment. So let's get the full count here. So there's three here. Two, that's, so that's five. We got three here, Scourge. Actually, it might be down. One with the Larva because of extra Scourge being produced. No, never mind. There's already Mutalisk scout. But what this is going to allow Crossy to do is go ahead and pick off an Overlord. Midfield. And so even though Striker managed somehow in the midst of that to sneak up... Actually, sneaking a Zergling to the natural expansion, doing some additional disruption. Is he going to get another drone kill after this? So up a drone. Lost an Overlord, though, in that exchange. And I gotta say, just looking at the Mutalisk fleets thus far, so let me see if I can get a pure count, because this is really important. Double clicking does it. This is before I hit control click on the last one. There it is, six. So we got six on this side. We got seven on this side. So Crossy with a slight Mutalisk advantage. After all is said and done. Zerglings sneaking out looking for overlords. Another overlord hiding in the bottom right hand corner for Striker. Even one Mutalisk can give you the win here. And there's a lot of Scourge that are floating out. Right now, Crossy trying to hunt down additional Overlords, picking away at that Zergling to go ahead and close down Vision. He has his own Zergling camped out to the front to keep an eye on any sort of Mutalisk that might come across. I think I missed another Zergling fight here on the front. But the Mutalisk army gr is growing on both sides. And I like what Stryker's doing. Never mind, he's killing his own Zerglings. That's what's happening. He's killing his own Zerglings to free up some supply to try to make up the difference from losing that Overlord to get more Mutalisks out. That's clever. Crossy diving in, getting a nice hit to remove one drone. So he's got positional advantage right now. If you can fight over your opponent's drone line, that is absolutely huge. That's so Zerg, isn't it? Like killing your own Mutalisks. Getting some free hits. I think that Scourge landed. Another one getting picked off. One Mutalisk laying flat. Now the Scourge moving on the opposite side. It is a big engagement. I think Crossy's going to win this because of his superior Mutalisk count. However, this is positional advantage. Yeah, Striker actually giving up. Just getting all of his Mutalisks swiped out. He realized even with the respawn at a close position, he was going to end up losing critical uh, gas drones at his natural expansion. So you can just see how razor thin this matchup is. Crossy riding the 12 hatch advantage all the way to victory. That's ZVZ for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Move on to the next match.